All right. So sorry for the um, for the slight delay. Um, we this is going to be a bit wild. We have like 30 minutes, and I just couldn't decide on what tools to pick because there's like so many. Um, and I, before I put this together, I was just emailing our team. Um, we're like 90-ish people now, and I was like, you know, guys, just name your favorite like three tools. And I got like 200 different tools back, and I was like, what the hell is going on, right? So there's like there's so many different tools. Um, I thought like I just try to kind of slice and dice it a bit and then just try to put it into different kind of use cases. So I put this like the deck is online, so like there's going to be 100 slides. So feel free to just take that URL that's on my SlideShare account and then um, you can just kind of follow up. And um, what I also did for some of the tools that um, we're using a lot, um, I asked the guys to give you like um, free uh, trial codes. So they are all in the deck. Um, please don't share it. It's just for you guys. Um, so it's like free trial for SEM Rush, for example, and then some others. So if you want to just play around with uh, with some of that, that's also totally fine. Um, so yeah, let's get just started and see how we how we get along. So um, first things first, I thought like, okay, what's you know what to use and what are we using actually today? Um, and then mainly coming from an uh, SEO kind of uh, uh, side of things. What are we using for competitive research, you know, like search analytics, visibility tracking, all of that stuff, right? So what's basically what's the favorite right now in, in kind of search intelligence? And I, I guess one of the most obvious ones um, right now obviously is SEM Rush. I mean, the, I think it, it massively depends on, on languages and countries you want to kind of look at, but for me, what, what I really like is the fact that they're like so global. They have like 20 ish languages. You can just literally plug in whatever you want and you get some, like, some decent result back. So this is just really, really great. And um, also, I can, I, the way this, the slides work, so I, so I, I, we put together like the costs, like the minimum cost for you guys, just to follow up. Uh, if it's a free trial, it's a SaaS or desktop. So it's, just, it's all in the slides. So hopefully, then it saves you a bit of time on just kind of picking the right tools um, for what, what you're actually looking for. Um, but, but what I really like about those is actually that they have, it's not one tool, it's like it's a massive tool set, right? So it's, it, yes, it has visibility, but it also has social media tracking. It's ha it has a decent like, site audit um, functionality. It has you know, backlink auditing. So it's, like, it's, it's more than a one single tool. It's kind of a toolbox, really, and that's what I, what I really like. It's, I think it's an amazingly good value for money. Um, you can connect it with the Search Console. By the way, I didn't put in the obvious ones. I didn't put in like Google Search Console, Google that stuff you know already, anyways, right? So this is like all um, non-Google, non-Bing, non-Yandex tools. But yeah, so you can plug in their data as well, which is really cool. Um, so this is a, a free trial. It's again, it's in the slides. You don't need to get them, but that one. But it's like an exclusive landing page for you to sign up. Just figure it out, play with it for a month, and then decide what you want or not. No strings attached. Um, the other one is a German company. A good friend of mine runs uh, Search Metrics. Um, they are more, I would say, in the enterprise level, but uh, they have a really amazing um, data actually, because it's not only it's not only competitive research. It's 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 way more than that. It, it helps you to create content. It helps you to kind of come up with topics. So it's like it's really also again like a pretty broad. Um, tool set, but to be fair, they are pretty expensive. So it really depends a bit on, on budget, right? Um, the other one is a, it's also a German company. Um, I like it a lot. It's called Systrix. The downside on that one, though, is it's great for the countries they cover, but they only do, like I think, six, six or seven different ones. So German-speaking region, UK, US, and that, that's almost kind of about it. So if you're doing, I don't know, Spain or Brazil or stuff, it doesn't do for you. So it really, again, comes down to what do you, what, what do you want, what do you need, right? But that's... Um, Again, it's not it's not really expensive. They start at 100 euros a month. Um, yeah, just you know, pick depending on where you're actually working in. Uh, another one that I really like is called SEO Monitor. Um, they they are a bit of a hybrid solution. They do all the tracking, but what they try to to achieve, and that's um, quite cool. They try to make um, a bit make it a bit more actionable. They kind of come up and came up with, I would say, like C level reporting that you can just pass along to management. So in terms of eventually you're in a, in a setup that requires you to do like lots of reporting, then that might be something that you want to have a look at because they really kind of drilled it down to pretty um, beautiful with nice charts and stuff, uh, reports that you can just pass along. Um, they put like ROI to, to it. Uh, they put you know um, these kind of metrics that, that, that probably like management really cares about um, into reporting and combine that with SEO stuff. So that's really cool. Um, 
the other thing that we all probably are doing to some extent, some more, some less, is rank tracking. I think that's still there. So like just the, the old school classic position tracking. I mean, yes, SEMrush can do that for you. Um, Search metrics can do that for you. But if you're just purely into rank tracking, those are too expensive, right? So one of the things that I like uh, is called STAT. Um, STAT is a, a, I would say it's large scale rank tracking. They are pretty strong with APIs. So if you want to get the data into one of your kind of tools or into Excel or whatever you're using, um, then this could be a pretty good solution. Or, and I think this one is around for ages, probably um, AWR, Advanced uh, Web Ranking. They have a hosted solution. They have a desktop solution, so um, whatever you like. Um, but they both provide still, and that's the, the issue is with lots of the rank tracking solutions nowadays, the data is just flawed because Google makes it insanely hard these days to just scrape the data and kind of really work with that properly. So those are still um, really working well. Um, another thing that's a sub-tool, but it's free um, from the SEMrush guys, is called Sensor. Um, we often get, as an agency, the question, you know, has there been a Google update, um, or is it just my site that has been affected? And what they do is, um, it's basically volatility tracking. So they kind of measure you against others. Um, so basically, you could kind of say, like, okay, um, yes, there was something that I fucked up on the side, or you know, there was someone um, else affected. So there's a high chance that um, there was any kind of update going on. What's really cool about this one, uh, you can see it on the left hand, is they even they broke it down into categories. So you could have a volatility just for sports um, and not the other industries, because oftentimes you see changes in one or the other. So it's not always kind of a um, global update or movement happening. So that's pretty cool. Um, Buzzumo is probably hopefully also known, and then I'm more or less done with the obvious ones. Buzzumo, what they really do well is um, providing you info about URLs that work well in social. So be it shared heavily on Twitter, be it heavily shared on Facebook, um, working well on Instagram, all of that. So what, what we do a lot with that is um, for our content campaigns to so just research other campaigns and seeing, or other sites and seeing which of those and their subpages got like a lot of social interaction, just to kind of um, prove on that we are either on the right or on the wrong, on the wrong track. Um, they just recently have been acquired, so I'm a bit curious to see how that goes on. But for now, it's a, it's a, it's a really good tool um, with loads of data that you could use if you're more looking onto the social side of things. Um, on the techie side of SEO, there's like there's like it's in, it's crazy. It's insane how many SEO tools are out there these days. So like from my standpoint, a lot of things come down to probably personal taste. Do you like the interface? Do you like you know, what they kind of offer you in terms of reporting? Because to be very honest, uh, lots of the crawling tools are pretty similar, right? So um, yeah, again, just a quick rundown on what we're using right now. So from, from a crawling side of things, what I really like is deep crawl. Um, it's like web, you, you put in any URL or domain, that thing crawls through, through the site, collects you all the data. You can see, like I don't know, broken links, um, whatever that is that you want to see, internal linking. Um, they report on, on HTTPS issues. They report on hreflang issues. So literally every kind of on-page tech SEO task that you want to accomplish, uh, in my mind, starts with uh, some kind of crawling, and then they do that very, very well. It's a, it's a SaaS solution, so it's hosted. Um, basically, you do a subscription or you do um, one-time kind of packages. Um, and they can help you literally with all the kind of SEO tasks that somehow are related to, to anything techy. Again, um, free try. If you want to um, play around with it, you can plug in one domain, um, crawl through, I think, 100,000 URLs and just see what comes out of it, um, and then decide if you, if you like it or not. The other one that's, pretty, I guess, pretty much well known is called Screaming Frog. Um, the major difference is this one is running on your local machine. So, and then this is also a bit of an issue. It's, it's, it's cool because it's like pretty easy to use, and then it's quite quick. But the downside is if you have large sites, talking like 100,000 URLs and up, um, it's just insanely using CPU and memory. So that's probably not the best way um, to, to, use your, uh, to use your laptop or, or local machine. So you know, again, depending on the size that you're working on, um, or the site you're working with, um, one or the other. But then again, Super cheap, 150 bucks a year. It's literally nothing, right? Um, a new one, and I'm curious to see how that, that kind of develops. Is called Sitebulb. Um, they do literally. They try to combine both. Again, it's it's running on the, it's it's uh, running as Deep Crawl does. Um, it's it's hosted. It's not running on the machine, but they try to kind of take those the, the easy approach of reporting from Screaming Frog and make that a bit more 
um, actionable, um, a bit easier to use because I'd say deep crawl is pretty heavy, techy SEO. So, um, and it's it's right now it's reasonably cheap, so that might be something that you might want to um, play with. The data is, is actually pretty good. Um, a German company does that's around for ages, but no one knows really. It's called Audisto. Um, they've been called Strucker previously. Um, they do the same more or less as deep crawl, but sometimes. I would say they're even more geeky, um, if that if that makes any sense. It's like sometimes you have like very weird stuff going on, and then like those guys go like super super uh, deep into the techie uh, auditing. So so if there might be a, a situation where you're stuck with crawling, then that might be something um, you want to have a look at. This one is amazing. It's free actually. Um, it's 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 a resource. Uh, TechnicalSEO.com. They have like 16. I think now it's even 18 uh, different sub tools. And then I oftentimes. I, I hate monkey work, right? So I don't want to do a task 10 times. So if I have to check 10 redirects or 100 redirects, I want to plug in all the URLs and run it and be done with it. Not like do this one, do that one, do that. It just takes ages, right? Um, so they have this, they have batch tools. Like if I want to check out 100 pages, if they are mobile friendly or not, or if the uh, if the schema markup is working well, you, you can just plug in 100 of those and they run through it. So that's really cool. that's free. That's like it's super easy, um, super easy to use. They're using the Google APIs in the background. Um, I, I like that one um, a lot. Another one is called Write or uh, OnPage Org, formerly. Um, they are hybrid, so they do what search metrics does on a smaller scale and combine that with uh, what deep crawl does. So again, um, depending on if you like it or not. To stick with the techie SEO side for a bit, uh, another big thing that I think is, is, is heavily overlooked still is um, anything with and around log file um, auditing. Because I mean, the, all this crawling is very nice. Basically, it kind of simulates what Google is supposed to be doing, but it's not, you know, it's not necessarily the case, right? So the only real-world data that you can have is actually looking um, um, into your log files. And there's also various tools to do that. Um, one, the, the, I would say, spin-off from the Screaming Frog from the crawler is uh, something they built just basically for exactly doing that. It's the Screaming Frog log file analyzer. So you can take any log file from your server, from the Apache, from the Nginx, whatever's running. You just dump it in there, and you get like a nice overview of reports. So which URLs is Google actually really visiting how often? Is there any broken pages just, just for the crawler? So all of that um, is in there, and again, it's 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 Super cheap. So, um, or if you want to go a bit more advanced, or if you, I assume most of you are running more than one site. Um, one solution that I like is called Logly, and then you can combine log files from different sources, from different sites. You could plug in all your affiliate sites, and then it takes the log files from those and makes like one beautiful report. And you can just drill it down based on domains, so you can even compare um, the crawling behavior between different domains, which is really handy. Or, um, and they do the same, but what they did. A bit better, I think, is for Logly. It's just you can run any log file you want, and then Logs.io built like log file auditing based on SEO purposes. So you already have dashboards that kind of make sense from an SEO perspective. You have a filter for I don't know Googlebot, Bingbot, Yandex, whatever that is. In Logly, you have to kind of pull that together um, by hand. Doable, but yeah. All right. Um, next one up is. Keyword research, um, content creation, topical creation, so everything in and around um, keywords. Kind of coming back to this one, they have a sub tool, and that's why it's why it's in here again. Um, SEMrush has a tool that's pretty new and that's pretty overlooked. Um, well, they have a massive keyword database. Everyone has that, and they have this in, in a broad variety. That's not the thing that I like. What I really like is uh, what's called keyword magic. Um, and the use case is pretty straightforward. So what you do is you select a country, like I did the US, and then I said, like, OK, my seed keyword is uh, casino in this case. And what it does is it's a filter on the left hand that says questions. And basically what it does is it drills down to, to all the questions, depending on the search volume, that have been asked around a certain topic. And that's really cool because if you have a page targeting, I don't know, casino or casino bonuses, what you want obviously on the content side of things is to answer the questions that people are actually talking about, right? And then with that, it's like, it's two clicks away. It's like it's super easy, um, it's very accurate, and it works in literally all the languages. Um, so that's that's why I really like it. Um, I just recommend to give it a spin, um, even if it's just for a month. The other one, which is also around for quite a while, I guess that's pretty well known, is. Um, uh, Keyword Tool IO, what they do is literally they scrape um, Google Suggest, Amazon Suggest, and all the other suggestion tools, and then kind of you put in um, casino and it gives you all the combination with casino back and forth. Um, so that's, that's, I would say, like the small uh, sister of, of that one. This is just 
way easier to use and a bit more advanced. But um, again, this one is free, so that's pretty cool. All right, um, link auditing. I guess uh, there were a couple of sessions of covering links today, so there's uh, still, like, I assume, a high demand on um, <laughs> anything related to links. So, I mean, again, there's pretty broad variety of sources. I think it just kind of comes down to m metrics that make sense for you, really, um, and then picking the tool based on that. So what we use is Majestic. Uh, for one, Majestic is probably the biggest database right now. Um, they have two kind of unique features that I really like. Um, the one is called um, tropic Topical Trust Flow. Um, what they do is they break down um, link quality and link equity based on categories. So you could basically see, if you look at a link profile for any given domain, from which industries a, do the links come from, but also B, where, they, where do they have the most value, right? So that's, um, that's quite nice, and no one else has that. So that's pretty helpful. And you can integrate it in the browser, because I'm, I'm lazy. I just don't want to kind of use interfaces all the time. I just want to have that all in my Chrome and then see the metrics when I surf around. So that, that's, that comes with it free, basically. Um, so that's, that's, that's cool. Um, the other one, I think, is our Ahrefs. A um, bit newer, a um, bit cheaper, but a very amazing interface, to be very fair. I think they made, they made really, really great progress on, on, on the software they built. And the data is also pretty good. They are, I would say, pretty close to the quality of, search, uh, of Majestic. So again, you know, I rather have both, but you can't have everything. The, the downside with all the linked databases, though, is no one has everything, right? That it just they're crawling the web, and some will miss this, and some will miss that. And then so the approach of link research tools, and then um, a guy called Christoph Kemper who built that, is basically get all the data and then deduplicate and use like the best from all the sources. So what you could use, if you could use his tool and then plug in the other ones. Um, using their APIs. So, so they all provide the data through APIs, and you can connect um, link research tools with the other sources and then kind of combine that. That's especially useful if you do link auditing, right? It's not only for, um, not only for analysis, but also for auditing. Again, they bring, um, they bring pretty cool extensions that are coming with uh, the package for free, but you can also use it without the account, at least with a limited kind of functionality. The, the coolest one that I like is called Link Redirect Trace. It's not so much about um, link metrics and link quality. It's rather about how, um, you know, how is there any redirects that, go, that are going on, how, what kind of status code are they using, which value are they passing, et cetera, et cetera. And I know there are loads of plugins, but this one is probably the most accurate one that I know. So that's really cool. Another one is called Link Parser. So if you do any, anything on the on-page related and you want to figure out follow, no follow, you want to open batches of links, et cetera, et cetera, um, that one is um, really helpful. Or um, if you want to see internally broken links, oftentimes that's cool for just you know, building uh, links for, or getting links that competitors had previously. If you just see by, while surfing around, if there's a link broken, you kind of can follow up on that and then figure out if that's something that you want to kind of um, persuade. So that's, again, in the browser free, costs you nothing. And the last one is, um, is Link Grabber. What we oftentimes do is uh, we look at on-page metrics and then try to understand if there's any multiple links pointing to the same URL because it's just a waste of link equity. And that one just does that for you um, out of the box. And if you do migrations or anything that has to do with you know, checking lot of lots of links at once, so Link Clump, if you go to the Google SERP, you can just open all the 10 results at once. And then if you have the link redirect trace, you could see if they're all redirecting properly. So that's, a, that's nice to kind of combine. Just give it, a, give it a play. It's like they're all free. It's all for Chrome. So again, it kind of comes down to the use case. All right, um, next one up is page speed. And I, had a, I think we had a session uh, in Amsterdam, actually, um, and I guess it's still a pretty, pretty hot topic, mainly, at least from my perspective, because like slow pages is just bad user experience, right? So it's not so much about SEO for me, at least, but more just kind of delivering a proper user experience. Um, so kind of uh, quickly, a couple of tools to, to kind of help you with that. Um, the, the most known and also the oldest one around the block is called Web Page Test. Well, you plug in any domain or URL, um, and it gives you like a waterfall, and you could see you know um, what components are faster than others, or where's this, where's the slowdown? Do you have any kind of slow JavaScript? You could do that. You could test from various locations, so from the States, from Italy, France, Brazil, to just see how uh, sites behave from, from uh, different 
from different locations, or you could say, like, okay, I want to simulate a 3G connection and figure out how fast it's on mobile. So that's really cool. Again, free tool, um, very helpful. The other one, which is free and paid, um, is called GT Metrics. The, what I like about this one is I think one of the common mistakes that people make is they just look at performance once and then they just forget about it. And GT Metrics could do that for you. You could set up a, like a project and it runs like every day or every week or whatever you set up and you get like a development um, over time. So that kind of helps to, if you have, say like you do a new deployment, you update your site, something is all, all of a sudden slower, you know it kind of, it relates to one of the updates you did. So it's just performance tracking over time. Um, really cool, really helpful. And then another one which is, which is kind of new, it's called Sidespeed.io. They, what they have is they also have a server module, which is really cool, because sometimes you just don't have the time and resources to implement everything that's necessary um, to make a site fast, or you just can do so much, and then they have a module that helps you doing that. That's really cool. And in Chrome, and this is, this is amazing. This is like probably the, the, the most amazing one I've, I've come across in the last, last year. Uh, it's called Lighthouse. It's the one that Google is pushing heavily. So what, what it has is basically the, uh, the, the problem with everything in performance is it basically what you want to achieve is that the site feels fast. Not that any number is fast. You want to make it feel fast. And what they do is they track, track something that's called pain timings. And pain timings means when does the first thing come back into the, into the browser? When do you see the logo appear? All of that. So this is all in there. Again, it's free. It's, it, it's super amazing. They have an API even, so you could automate that. Um, if you do unit testing or you have anything that's kind of a deployment process um, or with a cron job, you can just um, shoot URLs and it gives you back the, the data. Um, it's really amazing. All right, so a bit more um, on, the, um, on the browser side because there's like loads of things that you could do. What I like, obviously, is I try to uh, pretend and be Googlebot. That is uh, oftentimes quite interesting to see what sites are doing if you say that you're Googlebot, you're not. So user agents, you can obviously switch fake, so that's just in the browser. You say, okay, I'm Googlebot, and then um, fire away. Indexation rules is also probably interesting. So is the site indexed or not? I just don't want to go into the source code all the time. It just takes too much time. So like a green, a green or red, um, yes or no, is just helpful. You just see if it's, is it indexable or not. If you're using anything um, from the Google side of tracking, say the Google Tag Manager or Analytics, um, there's a plugin called Tag Assistant, and that helps you to set up a everything properly. Especially Tag Manager has these different layers and things that need to work the way they're supposed to be. It can you help you to debug? Say you want to track events on a form, like is everything filled out properly? Um, it kind of debugs if everything is set correctly. It's super helpful um, to kind of just figure out if the uh, GTM is really running running properly. Again, if you want to see all the, um, the meta tags in the, in the browser, I don't want to open the source code. Um, so that's straight. You just have a tooltip. says, like, OK, this is my meta description. This is my title, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's, that's pretty straightforward. Just it makes it way more efficient if you have it at your fingertips without just having to browse through the source code. And it's just, it's just a waste of time, right? Um, AB Tasty is also pretty cool. So AB Tasty per se is a tool for um, conversion rate optimization. So basically it allows, allows you to run split testing. And then they have an integration to set this up um, from the browser. So basically what you do is I say, I want to test this element versus that element. And then you can set it up straight in Chrome with a drag and drop. And you say like, OK, fire away. And then it saves the test and it runs in the background. So this is, this is really cool if you're doing anything in terms of it. You should in terms of conversion rate optimization. Um, really nice. Supermetrics is also pretty cool. Supermetrics is a plugin to kind of basically um, ease, uh, take out the pain of uh, anything that's to do with reporting. I hate reporting. Um, so this is like, you know, de depending on which data sources you're using for what kind of reports, um, you can plug it into either Google Docs or Excel and then just kind of collect data from your analytics or whatever you're getting data from. Um, and just one click and that's it. Really cool. Yeah, email. Um, Pain in the ass. I hate emails. Um, it's just no fun. I, I know when I go down here, there's like 100 more emails in my inbox, and it's just like, for fuck's sake, how are we going to do that, right? So emails. Um, one of the things that I think is in insanely important is email tracking. So I, wa I, I want to know when Michael reads my emails all the time. And I want to see that straight away because I'm curious, right? Um, and some other stuff as well. So Yesware is amazing. They do email opening tracking. You can basically you can imp in implement that in your Gmail, or you can implement it in, in, in Outlook, whatever you're using. Um, and you get 
like really nice reports on, on opening rates, um, on clicks on links, all of that stuff. Really cool, super helpful. Um, the other one that we use a lot, or that we used a lot, I show what you're using now, but it's called AutoPast. So my problem is I forget things. I send out an email and I have no fucking clue if someone replied or not. And if I, well, if I don't look for it, then I just would never notice if, if I didn't get the reply. So what that thing does is it, 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 it automates follow-ups. That's, that could be super annoying, obviously, but what it really, really does well is if you have outreach campaigns and you want to kind of follow up on things and you don't have the time to do it manually, you can just basically do a templated approach um, on, hey, did you get my email? Fire away. Um, the other one which I used a lot is called Boomerang. Um, the problem is, I think, personally, if you do email well, you, you have to kind of, you send something out and you have to mark it for a follow up in like two weeks, right? It's super annoying. Um, because it's like three clicks and it takes ages. And then I have to go to the separate thing, uh, folder, see if this in there, et cetera. So it just takes way too long. Boomerang, it's one click. So, like, okay, remind me in two weeks. That thing goes out of your inbox and comes back in exactly two weeks. Amazing. Like, I have it back. I just can follow up. Done. Um, that doesn't work with the very newest Outlook, or let's say it's a bit buggy. So my current favorite for everything is called SaneBox. I'm not sure if you've heard about that one, but SaneBox is absolutely amazing. Um, it's, it, it takes everything, mail tracking, follow-ups, to-dos, um, everything. Like if you do one thing, one tool, and you want to be a bit more efficient, this is nuts, seriously. Um, it's, it's $7, seriously, um, free trial. All right, um, a bit more productivity. I have two, three more minutes, and yeah, well, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Um, Google Data Studio is pretty new and pretty cool. It can connect to, it's free. Uh, it can connect to all of the analytics products. It can connect to the Search Console and all the other stuff. Um, it can connect to Facebook. It can connect to Twitter. It can connect to Pinterest. So if you have to do any kind of reporting and you want to do that A, easily, and B, in, B, in a way that looks nice, I would try that. Um, no hacking, no exporting, no nothing. Um, really cool. Supermetrics, I already mentioned, that would be the alternative to that. Um, Dashdis is my favorite tool for creating beautiful dashboards, because sometimes I have to do presentations. Um, and then that helps. So if you have to do any kind of, if you don't like the Excel shitty graphs and the cake diagrams, which are awful, then this is probably what you like. NinjaCat is more for paid search, actually. Um, so they have lots of um, connections to all the Google paid search products, so AdWords, et cetera. And then you can get all the AdWords log files, AdWords log files in that one and make nice reports out of that. If, and you should be, if you're using, if you're in SEO, then I think either you're a fan of Google Docs or you're a fan of Excel. I've never seen anyone who's using both. I hate Google Docs. I don't know why, but um, that's just the way it is. Um, and if you're using any of the tools I mentioned earlier, you could see, you already see it here. So RHS, uh, SEMrush, Majestic. So this is basically a plugin for Excel to pull the data from those tools into spreadsheets. And this is just super amazing because if you have to share spreadsheets with someone on the team or whatever, then you just you know you take the data and send the spreadsheet and be done with it. And it just has a functionality. Say like, okay, I want to have the H1 headline from the domain SEO tools for Excel. I just put in the domain. It scrapes and passes the site, and you have the data in the spreadsheet. So it's like this is super quick. It's probably not getting any faster if you're um, working on, say, small to, to medium-sized um, sites. If it uh, gets a bit bigger, then there's a tool called URL Profiler. So if you would say, like, Bastian, I want to figure out if I have 100,000 URLs, and I want to figure out if all of them are indexed, that's what I would be using. So you could basically dump in 100,000 URLs, and that thing goes through it and gets all the metrics that you want. So that's really. Um, it's, it's almost unbreakable, but obviously it takes a bit of time because Google scraping. The other thing I see like all the time and I could cry is that like, people do nice things and they have proper rankings and all of a sudden something breaks. Redirects are missing, um, certificates are expired, I don't know, canonical text gone rogue, whatever that is. Um, little Warden does, um, or analytics code is missing or GTM is missing, whatever that is. They do a set of just default checks every single day um, and just make sure that your site works um, from an SEO slash performance marketing standpoint. So they really they see like if on every URL you're tracking is still installed, or you know if the redirect from dub 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 to non dub 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 is still present out of the box um, for six pounds a month. Seriously. So this is really cool. It's new. Um, it's it's totally amazing. I like it. 
We built, actually, th there was nothing like that. So we built our own like four or five years ago. Um, but this one is like, it's like half a year old. It's really cool. Um, Hunter IO, we use a lot for finding contact data. So like our content teams oftentimes do loads of outreach and then email people. Um, Hunter helps you to find email addresses from any given domain or site. It's really cool. Um, you can even set up uh, patterns and stuff, and it connects with the contact database. So that's really cool. And I think we're almost there. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, you have to explain things to people, and then wireframes help. Um, Mockups, drafts, whatever that is. And then this is a, A, it's free, and B, it's, it's hosted. You can share a wireframe with someone else just using a shared link. Um, so wireframe CC cost you nothing. Super helpful. And I guess with that, two minutes, but 32 at least. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Bastian. Welcome. Did we have anything, Simon, on the Slido? No, no Slido questions. Any questions for Bastian before I maybe fire one or two at him? Anything from the audience? No? If you have a very limited budget, what are the top three tools you should use? Um, I think I would, I mean, there was loads of free stuff. I guess if I would pay right now, I would pay for one tool because of the variety. I would probably go for, for SEMrush um, because just it does allow you to do so many different things. One tool, a hundred, I think minimum a hundred dollars is just amazing. Um, if you combine that with some of the free ones, I think you're pretty much set. Um, the other two I would go for, Little Warden is amazing, like monitoring, um, that, that I would probably use right now. And then I think you need a crawler. So limited budget, I would probably go for um, um, Screaming Frog, just that I have a crawler, a search analytics tool, and then a monitoring tool, and then that's, that, that's probably good to go. Yeah. And do, when you go and analyze a site, how many of these tools would you typically be using yourself? I think it really depends on the, on the, on the type of job. But I guess, as I said, like, without a crawling tool, you're blind. Without a, like, a search analytics tool, you don't see rankings, performance, Penalties, whatever that is, right? So, log file analysis, um, definitely there. I think at least one more for on-site auditing, a performance tool. So I'd say like a handful, maybe a bit more. 